Hi, my name is Bill Yassis, and I was lucky enough to be the pastry chef for two presidents, George W. Bush and Barack Obama. I'm going to be making one of Mrs. Obama's favorite cakes, the red velvet cake. You may have heard that most of the desserts at the White House during the Obama years were pies, but this is an exception. The red velvet cake was popular and often served at birthday parties. As so often, we start with creaming the butter. So take soft butter and mix it with the sugar. Here we begin to introduce air into the butter process. That's gonna to begin to build up. In the meantime, I'm gonna sift my dry ingredients. Now that the butter is starting to fluff up, nice and fluffy, you can see the difference already. That's why they call it blanching the butter. It's starting to get whiter and whiter as the air is introduced inside. And at this part, it really takes two people. So I'm going to introduce John. He's going to slowly sift in the flour as I add the liquid ingredients. We're going to alternate liquids and dries so it all comes together into a smooth mess. I think one of the misconceptions about Mrs. Obama's Healthy Food Initiative, Let's Move, was that she might be anti-desserts in some way. That was not true. Mrs. Obama never asked me to make spa cuisine or low-calorie desserts or not use butter or, or sugar. But the way she saw it was that um, desserts should be not as frequent as it can be, so frequency uh, reduced and portion size reduced. But if we were going to make a dessert, whether it was to be served to the family or to guests, it should be very good, made from great ingredients and great technique. That way, a person is satisfied with a smaller amount. So we always made the best desserts possible, we used the best ingredients possible. There's probably no such thing as a healthy dessert, in fact. Um, but I believe there's a healthy lifestyle that includes desserts. Bakes for 20 minutes at 350. One of the most powerful things I saw happen at the White House was Mrs. Obama's Let's Move program. She invited chefs from all over the United States to come to the White House for a conference. And this was somewhat hastily put together with about two weeks notice, chefs from all over America came on their own dime Two weeks they had, and 700 people showed up on the South Lawn of the White House. So Mrs. Obama gave a speech asking chefs and our profession to help with the childhood obesity epidemic, with just generally healthier foods, and avoiding the kind of uh, bad food habits that have been building up in our country. It was an impassioned speech, and really everyone signed on to agree to do whatever they could to talk to their customers, to their families, friends, and uh, one of the important points was to try to introduce healthier foods into school lunches, a program which continues to this day and which all over the country uh, communities are facing and coming together in order to feed their kids a better style of food, better diet, and to uh, reverse the negative aspects of fast food and unhealthy eating. To do this, she then introduced a garden onto the South Lawn of the White House, which is not as easy as it sounds. It's a very compact area. It's only 18 acres on all of the grounds. But finally, a perfect area was found close to the fence on the, on the South Lawn. And uh, we planted a garden in full view with the full sun and uh, 1,400 square feet of vegetables, fruits. There was a fig tree 
every vegetable you could imagine, eggplant, tomatoes, corn, you name it, beans, all kinds of beans, and an herb garden. That became a symbol, I think, across the country for improving the way we eat. And it launched a huge program of planting gardens in people's backyards. So there were reports of garden supplies and seeds and compost sales really going through the roof. It was a great effort and it was something I'm proud to be part of, something that I continue to do to this day. I go to schools and talk to kids about cooking, about baking, and about their health. This classic American dessert, the red velvet cake, is usually and best decorated with the cream cheese frosting. So we'll start out by creaming our butter, soft butter that's been left out. We'll just use part of the sugar to really get the butter into a creamy state. Once we get the butter creamy, which means no lumps, we'll start to add our cream cheese. This process, similar to making the cake with whipped butter, is we're whipping the cream cheese like we whipped the butter, and the sugar acts as those little knives which are cutting into the cream cheese and introducing air, so it becomes lighter and fluffier as we go along. People often ask me the question, did in the Obama White House, did they sneak snacks or did they follow the healthy cuisine all the time? And the answer is they walk the walk, talk the talk and walk the walk. Yes, everything was healthy from uh, day one. Mrs. Obama talks about this in her book, Becoming, where during the campaign, it was very difficult to keep a regular schedule, to have regular meals. Sometimes there had to be like last minute arrangements. So she was very concerned about that for herself and for the children. So once things settled down and they moved into the White House, it was like the first week that Mrs. Obama called all the chefs into the, a meeting and said she wanted this to be you know, a very healthy time for herself and for the kids. And um, also asked for our help in making this uh, sort of a program that could be um, sort of spread out as an educational program for families and kids across the country. And that became known as Let's Move, became known as the school lunch program and efforts to um, just improve the way um, people thought about food and especially about kids and, and what they're eating, what they're eating in schools in particular. Um, so yes, they walked the walk. Um, there were no snacks. There were no like plates of cookies left around. Um, that if there were guests, yes, there were sometimes buffet of desserts, but for the family themselves, breakfast, lunch, dinner, healthy uh, and healthy and happy. So you see how much higher this uh, frosting has come up in the bowl. We started out way down here and now it's tripled in volume. All that air is being encapsulated inside the frosting. Once we have our red velvet cake baked, we're gonna cut this cake in half and trim off the sides. We're gonna assemble the cake, starting out with this piece. I choose to use the pastry bag for this process. It's a little easier to control so it doesn't get all over you. We're gonna build this layer up with the cream cheese frosting, put the second layer on top, cover that, And then we're gonna do the sides as we build the cake. This cake was often made for very special family occasions, birthdays in particular, for the girls, Sasha and Malia. I have such fond memories of them and uh, seeing pictures of them. They often would accompany their parents on travels around the world. One in particular of Sasha in the Kremlin, walking next to these Russian generals with the high hats and she's wearing a trench coat, sort of like a, a little small mini detective walking down the, the hallways of the Kremlin, an incredible shot, uh, looking quite confident, I have to say. And of course, wonderful um, pictures of them at Buckingham Palace and uh, being received by uh, Queen Elizabeth. The Obamas really made us feel part of their family. And um, when I left, they gave me a gift. 
The gift that they gave me was um, a letter that Queen Elizabeth had given to President Eisenhower after one of his visits to Buckingham Palace. And during that visit, President Eisenhower had complimented the Queen on the scones served at Buckingham Palace. And so she had the recipe typed out and sent to him with a little note saying, thank you for complimenting our scones, here's the recipe. <laughs> Mrs. Obama uh, gave me that letter as a parting gift. So this is that letter uh, typed in that wonderful Remington uh, typewriter type. You can see the date down here is 1960, enough for 16 people. So I was very moved by this gift. I mean, for a pastry chef, what an honor uh, to receive this piece of history, but I was, a little taken aback and I said, um, well, this is, this is a historical document. I mean, can I really have that? Can I have this gift? And she said, Bill, it's a copy. And that's the famous red velvet cake. It was a very popular item at uh, birthday parties during the Obama administration. It showed up on the Christmas buffet and now we can enjoy it here. I hope you guys are going to help me eat it.